landmines have been utilized in multiple conflicts for several decades. Their effectiveness and the fear they instill in enemy lines are remarkable. However, they have also generated significant controversy because, once a war ends, the mines do not disappear or magically evaporate, they remain buried, unmarked, and ready to detonate. This has claimed the lives of many innocent people. A Khmer Rouge officer once said, a landmine is the perfect soldier, ever courageous, never sleeps and never misses. This statement reflects the simplicity and cost-effectiveness of mines explaining their widespread use in numerous countries. However, the problem is that they cannot distinguish who they should target. In this video we will explore incredibly interesting and educational facts about these types of weapons which I guarantee will surprise you. So sit back and get ready to learn 15 amazing facts about landmines. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful content. Hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest uploads. Let's spread awareness together. The origin of landmines dates back to ancient times when they were initially non-explosive traps designed to surprise and cause casualties and chaos among enemy ranks. An early example includes wooden spikes hidden in the ground which played an essential role in history. Julius Caesar used them at the Battle of Alesia to defeat the Gallic leader Vercingetorix. This technique was also employed by the Scots against the English at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314, and by the Germans at the Battle of Passchendaele during World War I. Another significant historical trap is the caltrop, a metal device with four spikes that caused severe injuries to soldiers and horses. These were used by China at the Battle of Shanxi to slow down Genghis Khan's army, and Joan of Arc was injured by one during the Siege of Orleans. In Japan, caltrops are known as tetsubishi and were used by ninjas from the 14th century. Explosive mines as we know them today, emerged during World War I with the development of tanks, leading to the creation of anti-tank mines. These mines were large, clumsy and easy for enemy forces to relocate. To prevent soldiers from removing anti-tank mines, the first anti-personnel mines were developed. Between 1918 and 1939, the development and use of anti-personnel mines became a military priority. Initially, their use was controlled and directed at specific military targets. However, in the 1960s, random distribution of mines began, meaning there was no control over their relocation or deactivation once the conflict ended. During the U.S. bombings of Laos, thousands of mines were dropped from planes. In the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979, randomly placed mines were accepted as normal. Today, although the Ottawa treaties ban anti-personnel mines, they are still manufactured and used in multiple ongoing conflicts. There are two main categories of landmines, anti-personnel mines and anti-tank mines, Anti-personnel mines are designed to incapacitate or kill, collapse enemy medical services, demoralize troops, and damage unarmored vehicles. Within this category there are three main types. 1. Blast mines designed to cause severe damage to the lower half of the leg. 2. Fragmentation mines. These mines scatter metal fragments that can cause extensive damage to legs, abdomen, and chest, with a range of up to 50 meters. 3. Bouncing Betty mines that bounce before detonating, spreading fragments in a 360-degree arc with a range of up to 35 meters. Anti-tank mines are designed to destroy tanks and armored vehicles. They are large with charges of up to 14 kilograms, and their effect on unarmored vehicles is catastrophic. The operation of a mine is simple. A safety clip is removed, the pressure plate is rotated to arm it, and any pressure between 1.5 and 10 kilograms, depending on the type of mine, will activate the detonator. The detonator ignites the main charge, causing the explosion. While effective weapons mines are inhumane because, being unmarked traps, they can harm civilians and innocent people. They are used to defend military positions, protect strategic areas, and cause chaos and economic disruption. The most recent statistic indicates that someone in the world loses their life every 15 minutes due to a landmine, underscoring the severity of the situation. Many countries have used mines during conflicts, but without knowing where they are hidden, these pose a disadvantage to the very country that placed them. Afghanistan, Angola, Cambodia, Iraq, China, 
Egypt, Colombia, and Laos are the most affected. They also pose a serious problem in Bosnia, Croatia, Mozambique, Myanmar, Nicaragua, Somalia, Sri Lanka, and Sudan. Today, while the use of anti-personnel mines is rare and limited, it still occurs. Myanmar is the only government that continues to deploy them, while Libya and Syria used them in recent conflicts. Additionally, several non-state armed groups in some countries continue to use these deadly traps. Colombia and the landmine problem. The case of Colombia and landmines is a significant issue that affects hundreds of thousands of people throughout the country. Colombia has been battling guerrillas like the FARC, ELN, and EPL, as well as multiple paramilitary groups, all of which have used anti-personnel mines. According to the National Center for Historical Memory, the first anti-personnel mine in Colombia detonated in the municipality of Surata, Santander in 1982, causing severe injuries to the victim. From 1990 to October 2019, the Ministry of Post-Conflict reported 11,640 cases of victims of anti-personnel mines and unexploded ordnance, of which 38% were civilians and 62% were members of the armed forces. All Colombian departments, except for San Andres and Providencia, have reported mine cases, with Antioquia being the most affected, accounting for 22% of the cases. At one point, Colombia was the country with the highest number of landmine victims in the world, highlighting the severity of the situation. Although Colombia has begun clearing many mined areas, much work remains to be done. Egypt and its mine contamination. Egypt has been classified as the most mine contaminated country in the world, with an estimated 23 million mines. It is also considered the fifth country with the highest number of anti-personnel mines per square kilometer. Egypt's northern coast was contaminated between 1940 and 1943 due to hostilities between Britain and its allies, including Egyptian forces, against German and Italian forces for control of North Africa. The eastern areas, including the Sinai Peninsula, were contaminated between 1956 and 1973 during hostilities between Egypt and Israel. These areas, which represent 22% of Egypt's total land area, are rich in resources. The problem in Egypt is exacerbated because many of its landmines are old, difficult to locate, and mostly designed for use against tanks, adding an additional challenge. Various types of mines and their global impact. There are over 600 different types of mines, including fragmentation mines, blast mines, bounding mines, chemical mines, and even flamethrower mines. Some of the most notable include M18 Claymore, a directional anti-personnel mine developed by the U.S. Armed Forces, the M15, an American anti-tank mine used during the Korean War, the Chinese Type 59 mine, one of the cheapest and most widely used mines in many regions around the world. The Italian VS 2.2 mine with a durable plastic casing, this mine can be deployed from the air. The OZM bounding mine, Soviet made, and one of the most lethal types, the Haftholadung HHL 3, a flamethrower mine used during World War II. And finally, the M23, an American chemical mine developed in the late 1950s that sprayed VX nerve agent upon activation. Technology in Mine Detection and Deactivation Amazingly, one of the most despised creatures by humans, the giant Gambian rat, has ended up saving thousands of lives. These rats, native to Central Africa, have an extraordinary sense of smell that allows them to effectively locate mines. A Belgian nonprofit organization has trained these rats to detect mines in dangerous areas, clearing more than 13,200 mines in Tanzania, Mozambique, Angola, and Cambodia. Additionally, drone technology has become a valuable tool for mine detection and deactivation. A company from the Netherlands has developed drones that can create three-dimensional maps of mined areas, scan with metal detectors, and then detonate the mines with small TNT charges, thereby clearing the land. The Global Impact of Mines Recent statistics indicate that a person loses their life every 15 minutes due to a landmine. Approximately 70 people die each day, and a total of 26,000 people a year become victims of mines. Worldwide, more than a million people have lost their lives or been seriously injured by landmines. Although the cost of a mine is between $5 and $35, 
removing all the existing mines in the world would cost between $50 billion and $100 billion. Organizations like Minesweeper are dedicated to the removal of landmines and so far they have destroyed more than 2.2 million anti-personnel mines and 250,000 anti-tank mines in 64 countries. It is estimated that there are still about 110 million landmines in the ground waiting to detonate. Nuclear Mine Projects During the Cold War Surprisingly, during the Cold War, the United States began developing a device known as the Medium Atomic Demolition Munition, a tactical atomic mine with an explosive yield of between 1 and 15 kilotons, similar to the power of the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These mines were deployed between 1965 and 1986, although they were never detonated, and the project was cancelled in 1989 for being too costly and risky. The British had a similar project called Blue Peacock, aimed at developing nuclear mines that would be buried in Germany. However, this project was also cancelled in 1958 for similar reasons. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram, where there's new content every day and many surprises coming soon. Don't miss them. Without further ado, I wish you an excellent day. Thank you.